tanks in the lane. But the pet bot pulverize is such a great utility in the later game, it's though. Uh, we should move into the champion selection screen as it has begun now. And this will be the game, last match for tonight, the Saigon Fantastic Five against the Taipei Assassins. So we will see what's going to come up from this. So here for the first ban, we see Rise being instantly picked up. So I would like to say it's a targeted ban, but actually it's not. Rise is just so strong right now in the mid lane. And Toys is one of Toys' favorite champion, and he does use it like extraordinary. It's so a strong. Lot. Yes, very strong as well. Once you get the Mara Muna onto Rise, even tanks will get bursted down. It's so it's such a strong champion right now, and so tanky and hard to deal with. Yes, especially once you reach the mid game to end game. And the band champions, we see two ninjas. TT in GPL has been banning a lot of ninjas. I yes. have to say. We take out Shen like and Zed. They don't like these two champions. They are able to pick them. I believe they do pick up one of the ninjas of their uh, own. Akali. Cannon. That time. Akali. And yeah, Cannon. Akali and Cannon. Yep. There was a few games. It was Akali. Then the next few games, it was Cannon. Cannon. And so for the last band, so it's going to be kill as well as trash. So not going to ban out um, the jungle from Lil Balls, so he will have his choice. He must probably uh, pick Tarek. Tarek or...? So. Oh, oh, no, we Volibear. 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 It's a lot of Wally Bear. So, second Wally Bear game. Yes, so some, something different. I mean, Lil Balls can play a lot of jungles we've seen in Season 2. Yes. But when we came to Season 3, he always stuck with a few champions he felt more comfortable with. And now, I first time in GPL, it should be his first time using Wally Bear or second time. <laughs> I'll need to do a check on the stats after this, I'm not so yeah. sure. But here we might see Miss Fortune being picked up as the AD carry for the side of DPA. So on the bans again, um, SF5 completely banning out, well not completely banning out toys, but uh, doing a, banning one uh, his strongest champions out. Mm -hmm. It's those champions they don't want to deal with overall. Yes. And for the second game, we saw how Q just protect the AD carry and voila, free win. Yep. After the AD carry snowball, it was like a free Even win. Even in that game just did two or uh, five or Six hits, I think. That's all he did. It did so much damage onto Jarvan and onto um, Renekton. He he does have the extra burst percentage from Blade of the Rune King and then the extra percentage from his second skill. Yeah, it did so Barrage. much. Anyway, so we see a Zyra being picked up by SF5. We'll see if that goes into the... It's probably going to go in the support. I, I think it will be the support, but... Both Zyra being a support or AP mid is not that famous anymore. No. Um, wow. Well, There's more reliable actually yes. uh, champions to pick up. SF5 actually considering the Alistar pickup might be a counter pick, a counter pick up against the TBA not wanting the shadow traps. No, I mean Body Bear is most probably going to go to jungle. Yeah, that's I mean true. he can go up top, but he doesn't perform as well. I mean a top lane Body Bear is very hard to kill overall. Yes. But he, he also can do a lot of burst damage. But he needs to snowball to be very useful for the team. Because all the items Volibear buy to be strong is very expensive. Yes. So being a jungler, he, with the ganks, if all successful, it will be much easier that way. And he stacks up health, just tower dive, secure the kills for the team. And on the side of SF5, we will see Vi and Rarus being picked up, the locked ins. So, interesting though, Rarus has been more of a hot pick of recent, even in LCS. A lot of teams use him for his ultimate. As well as they turn very strong is crowd control. Like uh, you have to, your whole team has to break apart for the ultimate to stop. For the stop, yes. And it, that's a very big thing. Yeah, and with the heal of arrows, the additional slow coming up, it makes it very hard for people to fall back. And what they really want though is that Varus is slightly like Vayne and Cormor. He does have the blighted arrows to yes, do percentage, percentage HP damage. damage. Yep. But he needs to proc a spell after that. Toy is actually going for Twisted Fate. We have not seen a lot of Twisted Fate as Twisted Fate has been banned out a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, but Twisted Fate is one of Toy's favorite champions yes, as well. It is. So Toy's is just very versatile. It's almost impossible to completely you stop can't, him. You can't ban out Toy's yes. completely. I mean, he still has Orianna. There's Diana as well. Diana. Yes. So many champion picks that he can use. And for the start of SF5, we might see a Rumble being picked up. And while I would say that Rumble was like one of the best picks, strongest out there, but we saw how in the earlier game, how it got shut down by yes. BKT. Mm, SF5 was considering the Sin Xiao perhaps in mid. Okay, sorry, I, I stated that wrong. Sorry. BKT had... Oh, wait, sorry. MLE had the Rumble in the previous game. Yes. You know, he seemingly got shut down. He got he gave kills away. But in the team fights, he was so much useful with the equalizer yes. and everything. He, and the slow. And the slow. He just protected the AD carry. Sorry, I got my facts wrong. I was a bit... I don't know why I suddenly thought I was messed, messed up. Yeah, I, I say that wrongly. I apologize for that. And on the side of the Azubu, the last pick will 
B for Stanley, most probably we do. Might see a Jax coming right up. And nothing ridiculous this time. <laughs> well, by really ridiculous, ridiculous, I mean like Kennen or I mean Akali. Not that it's, it doesn't work, it's just it's kind of odd compared to the meta before. But it does so well, and here, yes, yeah. as you mentioned about it, there goes a ninja. Two ninjas being taken out, they take the third one, and it's definitely going to be Akali. Yes. <laughs> and I wonder how Akali is going to fail against Rumble, though. Rumble does have the ability to continuously harass Akali with Electro Harpoons, as well as the... Spitfire. The Flame Spitter. Flame Spitter. Yes, Flame Spitter. Constantly harass Akali, even though she is in the Twilight Shroud. So, interesting pickup. I'll just have to wait for, I suppose, Stanley's Fabulous Play to show us how it's done, how to shut down a Rumble this time. How do you deal with a Rumble <laughs> with, when using a Kali? Yes. So, for overall picks, uh, in the end, the support will be Zyra against Sona as well as Miss Fortune. So, very CC heavy lockdown for the South SF5 once again with Dyna, Zyra's ultimate, charging, uh, Dyna charging in, Moonrush. Diana, uh, Zyra's ultimate, holding everyone in the position, or Vi just charging in to hold anyone in their yep. tracks. And then having Varus to finish it all off, cut them all down. So very, very strong. Actually. Very, very strong. strong. Yes, oh. very strong. Yes. Outside of TPA, we will see Assassin Com though. So yes. if they are single target, single oriented. target oriented, if they're able to snowball the early game, then they have nothing to fear from the side against SF5. So it'll be interesting to see how Stanley and Toys We'll be able to get the kills with the help of Little Boss for this game. Alright, uh, so before looking at the Masteries and Ruins, we will go on a short commercial break, I believe. Mm -hmm. We're going to a short commercial break once again, and we'll be back, right back for the Ruins and Masteries of what this place is prepared for you. So do stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back, and we'll take a quick look at the masteries here. Wait, um, wait, I'm not sure what's happening. Dinter is actually playing AD carry, and Baby is actually playing support, which I just realized. Yes, I'm not sure that. I, I, I was looking through the runes, and I'm like, something's wrong here. Because it says Azubu TP Baby, and it says it has a name Sona on it. So this is going to be an interesting swap Ooh. around. Maybe BB is just going to relax for this game. He wants to play a support itself at AD carry. I think all of you guys who are watching have noticed it. Uh, we will oh. see, though, there are no gold generation. Queens for this sauna build is going for flat health on the side of the raid. Taking, very, very tanky actually. And also going for flat armor overall and with flat armor on the side of the seals. And lastly, with just three magic resist glyphs. Yeah, flat magic resist glyphs and other than that, it's all magic resist per level. And on the side of the masteries, it's going to be 1, 13, 16. So generally, what you really want, just picking up. Onto the Explorer as well as well for the early game. Block, which is very important right now for a support in order to reduce the damage taken together with if unyielding. So the Sona will be a very, very tanky support actually. <laughs> so let's take a look at Dinter. First time seeing him play AD carry or GPL. And yes, he does have the AD root set. It's going to be a very typical one. Flat magic resist, flat armor, flat damage with just one critical chance right there on the marks. And on the masteries, it's going to be very standard, 21-9 picked up. So Very standard, nothing very special standard. there. Yeah, But still, mm, we'll very see shocking how... to see, and we will have to see how well Dinter performs on this. Perhaps the switch did not happen? <laughs> no, definitely not, because be even, even in the lineup, so to speak, yeah. see Dinter as the fourth choice. And well, maybe as the last choice, which is going to be the AD, as well as... So, well, I don't know. I don't know how to talk about this. I'm just, I'm a bit, <laughs> a bit. <laughs> well, I'm a bit shocked. So this happened. 
I, you know, AD carries do play great supports, but some, of, most of the time, not all the time, I would say, because you know how the bottom lane works. They know, yeah, like, exactly. But first time seeing BB you know, playing support overall so far in his career. Oh man, that's gonna be fun. And this is gonna be fun that's and interesting. Going to be fun. I mean, maybe BB is just too stressed out lately. You know, he wants to have a more relaxing role. I mean, support what? is not relaxing, but you have no. to spend more time focusing on the map and other things. You just don't need to spend so much time thinking of how you're gonna harass the opponent. Score the kills and things yes. like that. Um, a different mindset. Actually, I read, I read a small article on Reddit that said support is the hardest, hardest um, role to play. Actually, you have to the visions you have to um, put for, put down for your AD carry, and as well as keeping track of the whole map. It's all the support's job. It's like ba you're the mother of the team. Mm -hmm. You have to babysit your children and carry them through vic to victory. To victory. Yes, so that would be the normally how people describe support and I agree with it. That's why most of the times in a lot of teams you would see that the support would do short, would be the short caller yep. because they have overall understanding of what's happening on the map and what they should be doing about it. They'll be the ones having the overview of the whole game. So a slight pause coming in here. Um, wonder if that's going to do anything, I have to do anything with the support AD C. I, I don't think so. I think it's nothing to do with that. But it'll be definitely interesting if you know something weird this happen. But we just have to find out. I think it, I think it's just going to be a uh, on the side of SF5. So we'll see. Oh yeah. Okay. So my producer say it's because of me. It's a Teddy Tibble bug. You no, know, it's a glitch where Teddy Tibble DDoS. Yes. Teddy Tibble <laughs> DDoS. You know where I'm. Where whenever I'm casting the game will be paused. You know the first game did get paused. Okay, but the second and third one did. So I suppose it's just blaming it on. Yeah. They're going to call it the. Yeah, as you would say, the Teddy Tibbers DDoS, I suppose. There was someone in the chat saying, Oh, Teddy Tito, uh, DDoS 2 OP! <sighs> oh, actually, maybe disconnecting. <laughs> yes, you see, I did not uh, touch anything, okay? <laughs> I've been sitting here the whole time, casting for you guys and preparing what to speak. As, and Cookie, and everyone else, I think they just enjoy trolling me around. Oh, well, let's see. <laughs> Overall, let's focus back on the game and what's happening. So, as you mentioned, SF5, once again, all in Team Com, on the side of TPA. It's not really all in, but more assassination early game. When you reach level 6, they want to snowball from there and yep. take as many kills as possible. So they will just win out every single fight from there, based, basically with stronger items and stronger champions. We're going to see Toys doing a lot of plays, hopefully a lot of plays, um, once he hits level We're 6. We're going to see BB do more plays and support Sona. Oh, as well. <laughs> that'll oh. be more interesting. Oh, that'll you know. be interesting to see as well. Yeah. Everything has been set up. Both things are coming up right now. With a slight change, everyone's thinking, what the heck is TVA doing, most probably? Why oh, they're trolling once again. <laughs> Why is BB the support? But we will just have to see how well they perform overall. And since Dinsa and BB are quite new to each other, I would have to say, they started playing together this year. Yeah, and now yes, before having a mistake as the support, mm -hmm. I believe. Before and now swapping over. Oh, here's Young Siu will be able to spot out Stanley and Toys does walk out once again. And he's just gonna guard the area. Look at the pings, they do know they are right there. They're worth walking back because they were spotted. But the ward already has been planted for a set of DPA. Both yeah, he's planting ward, he's spotting everything. Top side of ward is being planted as well. Now one over here and one here. TPA just by, um, putting down one ward at the blue buff. They want to know where the um, jungler is going after he does get his blue buff. So Stanley will get a heads up if Vi does come look for a go for gank him. top or hmm. if um, uh, Toys has to look out for the yeah. gank. But here we will see though, uh, Toys and Stanley most probably going to share the Riff EXP. So they're going to have a level advantage getting back into lane and so on. Very, wow. very stand procedures actually. Look at that BB being a boss at level 1. Hey, hey, TQ, come back, come back. Using the name of Valor as well as the passive proking. Right there. A power call. Just taking away about 100 HP away from uh, TQ. Actually, Sona doing a lot of damage early game even though he, you don't have any AP. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of magic penetration. Which BB does have in oh, this case. He does not have. He went for full armor, remember? Full armor. No, I don't know. I don't know. I thought he took a little bit. No, he took 20, it's 21 armor, 78 health, uh, well, 4 then. magic resist, and 16 magic resist at level 18. My bad. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I, I, think you, I think you might be thinking about yourself. Like Normally, a lot of support champions, yes, they, they will take, take the magic penetration, yes. But here, we can see that he's just going so defensively. So, in terms of trading blows, though, when the, Going to a higher level, Yang Xiu will have the advantage as Zyra with the extra seeds. Uh, but BB with the 
power core as well as Himmelaire will be able to kill off quite quickly, I would have to say. Well, BB actually have... taking a lot of damage from Akai, even though he does have the full defensive masteries. Um, looks like Lil Boss will be look, uh, will pick up his uh, red buff now. Um, probably looking to either gank top or mid now. But here, uh, Botany engage happens, exhaust goes down for both thieves. But Dinsa with the clans will be able to spot the first bird onto Yangsu and might be a second kill onto Archie because he did use his flash for onto Sona. Oh, Sona just, just dodging slightly the wow. passive on So close. An early double kill right and there. And that's wow. TPA out, just outplaying as a 5 in the bottom lane. Um, actually, um, Dinter doing a good job as focusing down the uh, other AD carry while Akai and Yang Sui were busy hitting onto Bebe, who, uh, who is sitting on a full defensive uh, rune mastery. Yeah, he just set it up. It was like Bebe was so low, but he just managed to shear it back up slowly, just moving back, just taking all the hurt away. Bao, Dinter just land free hits onto Zyra and then it's on onto Archai. And look at that, Toys being a boss in the mid lane, pushing out so far. And here we see A coming in for a gang up down bottom, but look at the damage come off with. Oh, they might score oh, another kill. Oh, might start a kill, oh, and wow. that's a killing spree kill. for Dinter. Yes. And a double buff. Yes, wow. And that <laughs> is bottom lane snowballing <laughs> for four, four minutes. Just incredible. It's just going out of control already. I think they did not expect the overall damage output to come up, and, and now, Dinter did a double up, normal attack, and flashed away. Here and the Milbot's mid coming in onto TUQ, Toys taking one, uh, two turret shots, and that will be a kill onto Toys. Oh, onto level TQ, four, four toys at uh, level four. Yeah, yeah. and bad. look at that, <laughs> so much pressure coming out. Really, Ink must be like, oh crap! I gave a double buff to losing bot lane, and mid lane just got ganked. I was dead. There's nothing much I can do about oh. this. And how are we and gonna come back? It's like now the level advantage already look starting at that. to show against uh, the oh. the, sl uh, the red buff actually slowing down. Um, Varus there and with the oh. just. With the magic damage, the double up, the extra damage, it was just so easy for Dinter to pick up the kill. As well as Buffy yes. is from the spawn. And not only that, so strong right now. it's so easy to dodge the bindings from Zyra right now. You could see it was just a small side step because the misses speed has been reduced. That's why, in my opinion, Zyra is not that great of a support anymore. And definitely, you need to be wary about that. But here, Dinter, first time AD carry on, well, on GPL and really scoring. Uh, four kills for himself in under five minutes. And now, um, TPA already sitting on a 4k, 3K, 3K. A 3k gold lead. My bad. Uh, Toy is actually also in the lead right now. Yes. And he's pick up his Shin. He's going to do so much damage against Dina with only Doan's ring. And only top lane because Navy is Rumble. He has a more favorable matchup from that. He's slightly. Okay, never mind. He's actually behind. He's actually just pushing the lane but not being able to farm the minions. I was just saying that uh, he managed to put a lot of pressure on the Stanley but he hasn't been able to pick up minions, which is the most important factor. If you notice, the CS difference is almost at 20. And now, uh, Toy is actually ganking up top onto Navy. If he gets slowed by the Twilight Shard uh, from Stanley, Navy dropping very, very low. The second stun will come up and that will be a kill for Stanley up top. And instantly just shifting even more. Everything into a more favorable position. Here and Billboard's actually coming around, actually flashing and fl uh, flings over the minion. The ex well, misclick right there, but Dinter will still get the kill, no problem <laughs> at all. And the boss almost falling very low, a passive proccing, like, yeah, my passive is still up and be ready. And here we will see Toys coming from the side, just defending his tower, and TQ and Egg together wasn't even able to take it down to take it take down quarter half of it. And Dinter just so happily farming in the lane, does not want to push the turret just yet. Just wants to push his advantage a bit more because he has one back, he has a BF sword and a long sword. And right now holding another 600 gold because of the kill. Tanking some damage uh, from the tower. No problems at all. No problem at all. Actually, already having the um, BF sword on him as well as a fort pot. Yep. Very, very strong. And here BB picking up the tier of the goddess. So he's going to be able to even help Dinta sustain like a boss in the lane with the heels and poke coming up, just continuously applying pressure and harassment. And wow, who needs go generation on Queens when you can just stang everything, yeah. help your AD score kills, and just shut down everything? Yes. And so far, seven minutes, uh, zero seven right there. And every minute a kill. Until oh, now. look at that Stanley being a boss, taking Navy down to three quarters of his health left and wow. winning the tree. And he Actually, has a hex drinker. And actually, Yang Sui putting a pink card down through the ward. Um, 
The bottom but look, lane, standing, but actually... Don't use the Ignite earlier, we're charging for the kill. He says one more kick. Oh, but the last flash from Navy will be able to make, pull him into safety. Uh, Navy does not use the Equalizer yet as well. Body Badge is waiting at the side, thinking he'll come in to help, just making sure that Stanley is safe. The really Equalizer does get used now to push, uh, push back the lane. Um, so that he can back off. Okay, that Kisuda coming in the bot lane, the damage coming out, and the exhaust, the bullet time, last hit right there, the flash comes in from BB, the land one more hit, just in case the Inter didn't have enough damage, but securing the kill. And wow, there was nowhere for Akai to go, and his flash just came up. Yep. Oh, wait. Uh, good, good timing on the flash as well, knowing when the flash will come up. Just um, engaging before that happens. Yeah, but now, even even if the flash did come up, he would have flashed away, and bullet time would still chip onto him, and they still tower dive. Look at that. BB is he planning for the tower dive? Look at that. Tanking the tower. He's standing at the maximum range, and they will take the kill. And here, at the same time, Toys will take something else on the side, as might be able to score a secondary kill onto TQ. And yes, they will fall up onto his, but nope, they will not be able to take him down. And wow. Yes, so many things happening at the same time. And now. In eight minutes, it's uh, Azubu TPA are sitting on ten kills right now. Great, great, great job by them. Um, I believe Toys stole the red buff. They're actually getting the kill onto Egg right there. Um, looking at looking at Dinter, Dinter is sitting on seven kills right now. But, uh, BF Sword just went back to buy it, finishing his Bloodthirster as well as getting his pair of boots now. Very yeah. incredible. Actually helping his team out by some pink wards. Yep. Um, incredible leap. There's a lot of harassment going on in this game, but we're going to go through, go through a short replay to see what happened and how Toys secured the kill earlier just now. So here we see um, Toys spotting off Egg um, with the ward, um, doing his red buff, and Toys actually puts on the stun card onto Egg. Uh, um, Ignite go does go down, Egg just tried to get away, does uh, jump, uh, use the Vault Breaker over the wall, but Toys just flash, flashes in for the um, kill and secures it. Mm -hmm. And there was just such a great play coming up from the side of Toys, and the place was well warded, so definitely he was able to score a free kill. So no problems from there. Here we will see, we will zooming back to the original game, just again, harassment coming out at 2Q. Right now at level 8, with the blue buff, is trying to. Well, do something for his team, trying to create opportunities to win, but no twist of fate, using his ultimate cherry to the bot lane, he's going to be able to catch out the young Siu, even though the knockout is going to come up, but he just died before, well, it happens, and, well, there's nothing much I could say about that. It's just, it's just right now, as you mentioned, when you fight against the AoE team comm, you have the assassins, the total... ...able to apply pressure to the tower, because A he's getting chipped down, and just, well, just being brought down all And over. now the dragon will get picked up by, um, by Azubu TPA. Completely uncontested, mm -hmm. even furthering their gold lead by... Yep, by but they're so going to give up the mid tower for the dragon, which is fine for them, because they have 11 kill gold lead, and the towers is the same. An astonishing 7k... At 10 minutes. At 10 minutes. Insane. Insane. They're just... actually keeping up with the one kill per minute mark. I suppose you could say right that now. It's one kill per minute up there being built up, and I'm just amazed. And the leaning phase has not really ended yet because SF5 has not. A I'm not able to purchase anything. The force fights for the side of TPA just by staying in the lanes. They are really strong enough. Look at Stanley with the hex drinker against. And Toys him. finishing up his lich pain. He will be. S He'll have so much damage. Having the Lich Pain at 11 minutes is going to be so tough for SF5. Um, TQ actually looking for an engage onto Stanley there. Um, Stanley will put out some damage uh, in return. Actually and winning the trade. Yes, winning the trade actually. And wow, the, uh, TQ is just trying to catch people off, make something happen, catch someone off, try to secure some kills but unable to do so. I hear Dinter, after pushing the bot lane, transition to mid together with Sona, and the wards are being planted over all. Look at the map control they have. Just planting wards all over the place on the side of TPA as they progress and push in further. Top side, we will see Egg, though, still trying to catch out Stanley. I don't think that is going to work out. And here, they will go in for Stanley right there. Look at the ping one instead being planted. The ultimate coming, but Stanley is going to be able to flash away from this, walks back to the tower at the same time. Azubu TPA takes the secondary mid tower, the inner turret for the mid lane. Wow, and the, the gold is almost at 1k, uh, 10k. 10k right now. Uh, three towers to one in the favor of TPA. And here they just have a quick run in, they're going to be able to spot it, but nope, the ward will spot him up, but they're not coming through the side, they decide to back off to take the safe route. 
I believe that SF5 wanted to try to cut them off but decide to fall back because, you know, they just can't win this right um, now. And wow, Dinser actually sitting uh, already has the blood um, the blood thirster as well. He's sitting on one thousand eight hundred gold, and Stanley actually sitting on two thousand five hundred gold. When he will go back and buy his items, yes, just he look, will be so strong. Just he, look at the top lane and AD carry. The difference is about like fifty percent. Also, looking at the of uh, at the farm of the carries, we see misfortune having double the farm, Akali having double the farm. Um, now the f uh, now the first tower of the top lane will get taken down with ease, no problem there. Mm -hmm. Especially since well, toys using Twister Fate with Leech Bane is a very yeah. strong a tower One of pusher. The strongest tower yes. pushes, and he got it like in like ten minutes. Yep, at ten minutes. And here we will see the blue buff going on to the south. Little boss, so he no, just give it to Dinter. He will give it to Dinter, and then. They're just going to apply more pressure. They're just going to decide the next objective. Is, are they going to wait for the next dragon, which is coming out in three minutes, or they're going to go for a quick Baron at the 15 minute mark? Because looking at the items, I think it's possible they're going to be able to score an ace and even go still go for the Baron. It's possible, but it's not a need yeah. for them to win the game right now. So I don't think that might be the best decision to make. But you can see the TP is just moving as a team, securing every single objective, sling opponents blue. Opponents raid, right. and they're just gonna clear out the jungle as well before they fall back. And here we might see the you know, Dinter being caught off, but nope, he will be able to make it out. The strat is the ward has bought off the ward just bought off TQ there. Um, Toys just going to farm up bottom lane with little balls, and perhaps he might go back and itemize. Yes, they do have uh, still a lot of gold holding on to themselves. Three thousand one hundred mm. gold, and still countering wow. his farm. And yeah, and still going for the farm. Once Hilly goes back when he gets major items, that's what Stanley does. He just farms all day, just get one major item, and then kill people, and then go back, come back with like a full set of gear saying that, hi, it's time to fight. Looks like um, Toys will be opting to go for the zone. He's picking up the Seeker's Arm Guard, and as, as well as um, his Sorcerer's Boots and a few wards to help out his team with, with the vision. Mm -hmm. So they really want to secure the vision as well as the power they have and here we will see the boss charging flash with the rolling thunder fling to back to flashes over the watch flies over to the rift and the blue time for Dinter is wasted but little boss is still chasing on to TQ he has nowhere to run and TF Toys is actually doing the blue buff is gonna come in for the last hit with the Lich Bay and yes he will take it and he will move back to his blue buff say yo why did you kill him I want my blue buff it's important <laughs> to kill and here we will see the SF5 will try to take down this tower because they need the money but that's um, he is already on the way. The ultimate from um, TF does get used. Now, the hurt from TP is coming down. They do get knocked up. Blue Bolts does drop quite low. His passive does go off. T um, no kills going down yet. Young is still alive. Blue Bolts is uh, still regenerating. No kills going down here. But now TP is still looking to follow this up. The slow does come down. The flash comes out from Young Uh Toys moving very, very fast. The hit does come out from Toys and the kill will the Wildcats will pick up the kill for Toys. Oh, and then he comes out from the mid side, will be able to dive on to Archie, Archie and he will be able to score a kill. Look, baby, for his solo, he will go down from this. But Navy, look at the damage coming out of Stanley. He's like, hi. Oh, wow. Using the tire shot first. Not going to change targets onto TQ. Just trading some blows right there in the tire shot because he does have the advantage. And at the back side, though, Dinter coming from the end, taking the kill wow. and another kill for Stanley, killing Diana as he was just hiding in the tire shot. Don't you know you're behind? You don't fight Akali in the tire shot. It just gives her so much thank you. As well as, like, um, as well as um, Stanley going for a lot of attack damage, he has a lot of base attack damage. So he, he does a lot of damage just by auto attacks. Standing in his twilight showers, just auto attacking onto um, QQ there. Not giving, winning the trade just immensely. Mm -hmm. And not only that, uh, Toys finally being a happy person, being able to secure his blue buff. That is why he man, he man, he's like finally I can take my blue. He just walks away from that after the whole engagement happened. And he's happy about it. And here, TPA will take up the the dragon as well. Now the, the gold leads sitting at. Sitting at 12k at 60 minutes. So right now we're going to go through a quick replay of what happened just now in the fight for the bottom lane. So here we will see though Crescendo hitting on the two mid targets of Flash Crescendo. The knockup going on to Baby because A couldn't go that far. But Zyra's ultimate does manage to hit everyone. But the overall damage coming out from the team was not enough. 
and they just were poking around as all that happens. As, and let's just take a quick look, a pause. You can see Stanley actually traveling from the mid lane, moving in, moving in before anything, already coming into position to help out his team from there. So we're going to move back right here very quickly, fast forwarding this, and we're going to see them pick up the kill. One kill, and then the secondary can suddenly finally comes in. At the same time, the Rumble going in. Just this whole fight has been a long delay. Ninta is actually still farming mid as this happened. Rumble manages to secure the kill on Bebe, and finally, as that happens, Ninta decides to travel down from this. So Navy does get out of this one. Now we do see Stanley actually going on to TQ here. Um, TQ trying to win the trade out onto Stanley, but we see Stanley putting out so much damage just with his auto attacks, using the Twilight Shard, getting the extra magic resist and armor to deal with TQ. And while, meanwhile, while that's happening, Dinter moving in from the side will pick up the low health Navy. <laughs> so moving back right into the game, we will see uh, Tisofei planting the ward in the mid lane and they are just going to plan for the next engagement. Toys has his ultimate up and ready. Crescendo is ready as well for the side of TPA. They have everything ready for the next engagement. Wow, this is actually the first time that TPA has been behind their one minute per uh, one kill per minute. <laughs> no, the next kill is uh, coming out. Here we still see Toys get caught out of position. He will manage to flash out and here the stun card goes in. Vi charges in but not enough damage being built. But in the Crescendo will save him in the end. And the little boss as well as Toys falling very low. But after all those ultimates used, they will not. Both of that, both fight sides will just walk away. Unable to score any kills at all. So here we, as the game progresses, we can see how far ahead TPA is. Dyna supposed to be a very bursty champion. So is Vi. Yes. As well as uh, Rumble, with the, how the champion should be. But they don't even have enough damage to lay down Twister Fate, which is one of the squishier champions. Yes, Twister Fate actually being a very very squishy champion. Um. This is completely snowballing in the favor of our Super TPA. It does not look like SF5 will be able to come up from this. Pink wards coming down from Bebe, doing look, giving a, at the ward uh, control as you yes. were talking about. There are only just two wards on the side of SF5, and TPA has all areas well warded in order to preparation for the next thing. And it was still the blue buff, and this might be where the next fight happens. So here we see everyone moving in. They are. They know that TP is taking their blue buff, and they do not dare enter. Here the wild cards come in. The ward does spot up. Volibear trying to attack the wolves, and Volibear is like, "Okay, you miss your skill. I'm just going to charge." What well, the walk past right you take some damage and be like, "The red buff looking to take that objective once again." Before moving in for the kill, almost probably. They have scored enough objectives in terms of taking everything away from the opponent, even the jungle minions. And now the bottom lane is about to push in, and we might see the bottom fight engage, and we should land up into a team fight at the same time. So now uh, Azubu TPA are trying to pre uh, are pressuring the bottom tower. Um, and look, and they're hiding behind though. Vi will come in, trying to land kills onto Dinter, but Dinter will be saved by the exhaust, and here the knockout will happen. Dinter will most likely fall with together with Varus, but here Volibear from the back, standing, just clearing everything up, taking down one kill, second kill onto Yang Xiu, and now moving on for the Rumble. We see the pins coming off, and there is no but Wow, Rumble is just riding really far away, <laughs> making sure he gets out of the safety. And here, <laughs> eight as well. Sandy is like, oh, where Actually, a great, great engage there. Vi as a five. Vi locking down one of the carries, doing a good job at um, taking the carries down as fast as possible. Um, toys and Dinter dropping pretty fast. So, this is what SF5 needs to stay in the game for a few minutes longer. Mm hmm. So, and after securing the tower, we will see TPA fall back. And right now, we're going to go into a quick replay of what happened just now for that fight. Take a closer look of how everyone moved in. Stanley was actually in the mid lane when that happened. So, here we're just going to put it slightly, move it slightly forward where Dinter got caught from the back where Vi moved in. And here, Volibear fling him out. Equalizer came in with Diana. They just dished out everything onto Dinter. They managed to score the kill onto 2Q first, but the knockout. Coming from Yang Xiu will and as well into. as well the ultimate from Akai doing a great job as locking down both the carries, doing also dealing a lot of damage, and then we see Stanley coming up for the cleanup onto the support as well as onto the um, AD carry of SF5. A great, great um, still in the favor of TPA, but also a great initiation by SF5. Mm -hmm. and so here we will see they have broke the bottom tower. Everyone has responded. They have bought their items, and look at that, Akali. Standing on Akali with the green, uh, sorry, 
Hextech gun blade, Hex Drinker, a Giant's Belt, and a Ruby Crystal. So tanky. He's not even upgraded the boots yet. 501. On the side of Little Boss with the Aegis. Going to be a Ruling Bulwark very soon. Madras Claw, boots on mobility. Very tanky for the team and provides so much CC at the same time. And actually, Toy is getting caught out by Egg here. Does use his ultimate, tries to get out, but he will get locked down by Egg. And this is the dead Toys right there. Yes, Toys. Nice being... pickup by SF5. <laughs> Toys being too bossy will end up getting killed, but we will see everyone else from the TP is coming for the revenge. And here, Stanley's just going to charge right in. Volley back, the Rolling Thunder tosses his QQ back, and he is in a bad position. Look at BB, so tanky, like taking and no damage. And Stanley now on a six kill killing spree right there. Really the unstoppable force mm -hmm. that we know him to be. Yes, and here we will see them take an easy tower, most probably. Body Bear is just waiting for his Roy Th Rolling Thunder to be up and ready before he just charges in to fling someone back. And they're, they're going to win the fight because Sona has actually not used Crescendo. Nope, Crescendo still up, the bullet time is still up by, uh, from Dinter. As well. Dinter being the bait right there, baiting A to dive onto him. He will come out with his abilities, the double R coming out. Look at that, the boss coming in, will be binded, and Sunny just charging from the back. The ultimate from Revis does catch him, but and it will that not is be an enough. And look at that, it's a total domination. A almost four and an four. ace, actually. Oh, it is an ace. Oh. Almost not an ace. Oh, Tuku <laughs> almost, almost came out. Almost came out, and yes, and then he scored an ace before Tuku revived, respond. So, a great pickup and great play right there on well, the side. Let's the look game. at the items of Dinter. Dinter actually sitting on the Black Lever, shredding armor like crazy. <laughs> and um, also, look at that. Tuku tried to defend the tower, charging to kill Little Boss, but. He would get shut down so easy. I'm not sure why he made that decision, so maybe he was like just desperate to go for a kill or try to secure something for his team. What do you think about that charge? What, what do you think about him charging in actually? Uh, I don't know if it was worth it. If I think the tower does survive in the end, I yes. guess that's worth it. A kill for a tower is worth it. Kill for a tower is worth it. So, I mean, depends, but you're so far behind. Uh, I suppose you just I, want to try I mean, to give him. He is Owen six. He's probably not. Uh, he's not worth any gold anyway. So the dragon has spawned up. A TP is going to go and do it. I believe that SF5 won't be able to react to it. So we're going to move right into replay very shortly to take a better look of what happened in the engagement just now. So here we will see though Stanley charging right in instantly onto Tuku, but lands the hits, the burst, but changes his target later on after he has managed managed to. Land overall burst. Look at and that. And then Bebe actually coming in. Um, Tuki actually jumping, uh, jumping on onto Bebe, but Tuki will get dropped in an instant. Um, the crescendo has not been used, and this is where um, SF5 d decides to go back um, from this one. But um, I believe that they do get baited by Bebe. Yeah, they do get baited later on. Din uh, Dinter comes in from the side seat. They will get baited by Dinter, and here Volibear is going to charge right in. He gets binded. Blue time comes out, and the Crescendo lands. And let's take a quick pause as Stanley charges in for the kill. Dinter just jukes at both the champions from the back, almost forced, but managed to secure the kills from there. So definitely a great pickup on the side of TPA once again in that fight. 424. And, and moving back now to looking, uh, now, now looking back onto the live screen. 25 to 4 kills in the favor of TPA. Such a huge demanding lead. I don't think SF5 can come back from this one. I mean, they're doing their best to try and shut down one champion, but when they do shut down a champion, they just they waste so much resources. And yes. that is why they're unable to, to do that much about it. So here we will see finally TQ gets the blue buff. I would have to say, finally he gets finally, his, his first blue buff. Yes, after so much of havoc and so much of... Oh, it's actually the second blue buff. He got the, he got the, the first blue buff at 7 minute mark. Yes, he did. And this is the second one, but it's been so long since he had it. I just had to say it's the first one. It's like, I can't believe, like, wow, that took forever for blue buff to... Add. If I was an AP carry, I would be so sad. Like, my blue is always gone. Yes. yes. That's true. <laughs> and now, actually, we see uh, Toys picking up his Zonia's Hourglass. So, he will be able to bait um, the enemy for his team yep. with it. We do see though, SF5 knows that Twister Fate is pushing up top, that uh, TPA is farming around their jungle because that's the last inner turret, sorry, the last... Second tier turret. Second tier turret. And here, Azubu TPA will be able to take it so easy, uncontested, but Toys is still being a boss. He wants to continue pushing on alone. Now his teammates fall back. I believe he will be the distraction while he teams He's going to charge onto the Baron. And it looks like um, TPA is looking to pick up the Baron here. Uh, it should drop in an instant. 
Misfortune sitting on the blood there, so Black Cleavers and the Last Whisper doing a lot of damage actually. Mm -hmm. So here we will see SF5 grouping up, but not sure whether they should move in. They're afraid that there will be a bait here at the brush and Baron will fall in the end. Look at that, they finally put out the ceiling, charge into position, but TPA has already finished the Baron and charging out. And it will spawn egg away from his team and they will be able to land the kill. Nope, the ultimate from Baron will stop them together. One together, but the but bullet time. time shredding SF5. 2-0, allowing Stanley just to pick up the kill with his ultimate. Like, that was wow. instant shredding. Wow. That Almost tons of damage. It, looked, did out. it looked so yeah, much in the favor out. of SF5, actually. Mm -hmm. But then, um, not having the vision of Misfortune, Misfortune being uh, able to channel the full bullet time, that was just shredded. It just got shredded all the way through. And here we will see TPA push in, already taking on the tower and here we will take a closer look at the fight load. We're just going to focus more on what happened in terms of how Misfortune's damage came out. So look at the inhibitors are going down very quickly. And wow, I believe this will be the game. So moving into the replay very shortly after this because TPA is moving back. So here we look at that. Take a closer look of all the ultimates landing onto Baby as well as Stanley. But look at that. Inter is free to use his ultimate. So we're going to slow it a bit more. Oh, oh sorry. That was a misclick by me. Oh, wow. I'm such a bad replay artist. But... Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. So let's just go back slightly just to see the burst coming out from uh, Misfortune from that fight. Okay, so here, look at that. With that bullet time, just call even in the, every, every Even day. in the back line of SF5, they're getting shredded to almost nothing. Yes. And then, and then there's Stanley just coming in one after another, kill by kill. Just clearing the entire team. And there was nothing that SF5 could do. It was that. yes, very nice positioning by Dinter, showing that also a support can play an AD carry. And it was <laughs> definitely a great pick up for the South of TPA. I mean, well, everything is a great pick up for them because they're already so far ahead. But those team fights just show how much they're dominating the opponent. And now they're but sitting on a two a 22k gold lead, just going to be unstoppable. Yep. Because that team fight was actually in the favor of SF5. It was a tight area and close area. It was definitely what they wanted. But they had not enough damage and to follow the, up with it. And the misfortune bullet time was perfectly placed. Yes, and it just shredded everything. Yes, everything. Because there was no health on the side of the team yet for the on SF5. Except for Vi with the lock of Iron Slurry and the Ruby Crystal building onto Aegis. <laughs> But it's just... Zuki actually enough. pushing up the uh, top tower, getting the third tower for his team. But Azubu TPA um, is already knocking on the bottom tier, uh, on Hibberto tower. Yes, Stanley is not going to let this go. You took my tower, I'm going to take your life. And Stanley charges right in and takes Zuki instantly. And here Dan is he actually <laughs> sitting on a Trinity Forest, a Sunfire, Sunfire Cape. Cape. And as well as the um, Hextech Gunblade. With the Hex Drinker. Just... Insane. So powerful and insane. And look at the tower going out so quickly. We will see Egg dive right in onto Toys and Toys uses the Zonyas for the bait. The bullet time comes out. Look at that. Perfect crescendo. Wow. Stunning everyone except for the support and the bullet time follow-up just decimated everything. That was just that was just a repeat of just now, but yes. the crescendo was better landed this time. And maybe it's just flashing on for the power uh, for the power cord um, to pick up the kill. Right there. And that is it. That would be the GG as Stanley was not even there. And, and he just came in from the top lane to, to finish up the Nexus. And what a dominating game by TPA. Oh, yes, <laughs> just amazing. You know, all these games have been total domination. But for this last, I think, I suppose, the best for last. Yes. It's just, they just destroyed. Sing SF5. Single, single sided games. Like, SF5 had a great plan coming up. Uh, following up for this fight, sorry, our client crashed, so we can't show the, uh, the score screen. Uh, oh, that's, that's, that's unfortunate. But everything, though, for this fight was just perfectly planned. Was I say. The, the positioning of TPA so well, uh, so well placed. We had the AD carry in the back, channeling the bullet time, having the support in the front, putting down the crescendo on the whole enemy team, as well as having... Um, well, on the side of SF5, they had a good positioning as well, but they just could not deal with the damage. In the end, TPA had so much damage, they couldn't do anything about it yes. anymore. And Dinta was able to complete his item so quickly that... Well, I mean, <laughs> if you're normally in the mid-game already, you would say that, oh, Misfortune's blue time is like, yeah, it's just itchy. Yes. But 
it just decimated I mean, took down ultimate even the, destruction. Even the Rumble, who's usually a very tanky upfront champion, he was just sitting in the back and he was practically only getting damaged by the bullet time and it took him to almost zero HP. It's just incredible. Like, incredible amounts of damage with the bullet time. You, you used to see it a lot when before Black Hero was nerfed yes. and now the Black Hero is nerfed but because of the such a heavy upfront advantage, Bloodthirster, Last Whisper, Last Whisper. Black Hero, no more armor. No armor, nothing nope. at all. And Pure damage. damage. Pure damage. So, a great third game. So, uh, here's a quick recap. The first game for today, uh, 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 sorry, HQ Esports Club against Cal Hunters. HQ Esports Club, uh, sorry. HQ Esports Club actually <laughs> winning the game for uh, against the Kale Hunters. Are you alright? Sorry, I just choked on myself. And on the second game, we had... <laughs> Stop laughing, it's not that <laughs> so, <laughs> the oh, funny. Funny producer think it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second game we had for you guys was MLE against the BKT. MLE took the win, and the last game would be Saigon Fantasy V against DPA and DPA. DPA just Saigon Fantasy V was not a weak team that had a lot of things planned out, oh. but they miscalculated too many things no. in the beginning of the game. It was it all started from misfortune snowballing at the bottom. Of it. In the end, without any help, I 